After another big win, Donald Trump has finally wrapped things up. But the question is, will the GOP step up and jump on the bandwagon, or will the tension stay all the way through the convention? Then we will pivot to the law and take a look at the 12-year sentence that Shelley Silver just got and debate what that means for Dean Skelos, who is set to get sentenced next week. Also, President Obama visiting Flint, Michigan today to see how they're dealing with a water crisis. That is, tainted water pops up in our area. We'll ask our panel of attorneys how big a legal mess this could turn into. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Richard French. And then there was one, and his name, believe it or not, and I won't pretend to have thought this ever could have happened, but Donald Trump. Minutes ago, John Kasich, he dropped out. Here's what he had to say. As I suspend my campaign today, I have renewed faith, deeper faith, that the Lord will show me the way forward and fulfill the purpose of my life. A lot of praying. Now, Ted Cruz, he stunned everybody last night when he dropped out. That after Trump crushed him by double digits in Indiana. Cruz clearly emotional when he delivered the news after the race was called. From the beginning, I've said that I would continue on as long as there was a viable path to victory. Tonight, I'm sorry to say, it appears that path has been foreclosed. We are suspending our campaign. But hear me now, I am not suspending our fight for liberty. By the way, um, he actually threw a forearm shiver at the white by accident, if you saw it. Now, Trump, though, as you'd expect, and he actually was magnanimous in victory. Ted Cruz, I don't know if he likes me or if he doesn't like me, but he is one hell of a competitor. He is a tough, <laughs> smart guy. And, and he has got an amazing future. He's got an amazing future. So I want to congratulate Ted. And don't forget, just 24 hours earlier, the Donald sent out a tweet suggesting or forwarding along a story that uh, Ted Cruz's father may have been on uh, the grassy knoll and been responsible for the death of John F. Kennedy. But who's uh, keeping track? All right, let's bring in our panel right now. Brad Gerstmann is a political consultant, founding partner of Gotham Government Relations and an attorney. Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. He saw all this coming. Former Republican Queens Congressman Bob Turner. He won after the resignation of Anthony Weiner, as you may remember, and Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. All right, Andrew, just put a, a punctuation point on this. It's kind of resolved right now, but Trump's going to get to... Cleveland, and he's not going to have any opposition, right? Yeah, Trump's not at 1237 yet, but you assume that he'll pick up enough delegates in the remaining primaries to get there, so there shouldn't be any issues on the first ballot. Um, it should be his. Clearly, um, Bob, if, and again, I'm looking at Dominic, but if anybody said they saw this coming, right, um, I'm taking them to Vegas tomorrow, and I'm going to lay down odds uh, on a whole bunch of stuff, including the Derby. <laughs> Nobody could have imagined when he came down the escalator uh, and he announced his candidacy, that we'd be sitting here in May and he'd be the nominee. Do you attribute that more to the fact that the field had 17 people, there wasn't really a strong establishment? Why, does he, uh, why are we sitting here today and he's the Republican nominee? Well, um, we Republicans spend a lot of time talking to each other. Uh, I'm also uh, chairman of Queens County Republican Party, so I, I've got a foot in the... Um, the establishment, um, and I, I'm sympathetic to the conservative intelligentsia, you know, the yeah. commentary and standard and uh, uh, so on, the thought leaders. Uh, nobody saw that, the Trump thing coming, but where I heard it was on the ground um, in Queens, where Why? he won 60%. Uh, um, I, I, been a bit uh, at uh, a loss for that because I think many of the failings we have, we had good reasons for it, we were not in power, et cetera. Uh, people have had it, uh, and, and I hear it all over. Um, but he wasn't the only angry voice. 
People who listen to Ted Cruz, uh, Ted Cruz took an even more strident view on immigration than Trump did. Uh, uh, Ted Cruz, I, certainly on issues of women and choice, no exceptions, rape and incest mm -hmm. and the rest. Why did Trump break through and he didn't? Is he just a better personality? Well, in a way, he packaged himself and positioned himself better. Uh, but he is also not part of the establishment. Uh, the, we yeah. have been rejected. This is a grassroots mm. thing. And I, and I think it uh, is incumbent on the, uh, the leadership to understand that. Mm. So, um, yeah, well, uh, I'm grappling with that right oh now. Oh, my gosh. And we happen? all saw the covers of the Post <laughs> in the news as to, to where they are, including one uh, that basically an RIP for the Republican Party, the Daily News, that is. Um, Brad, I've heard a lot of theories uh, the, the day after as to why it happened. Forget about where it goes next. We'll do that next segment. One is the size of the field. One is that they took too long um, to kind of cut the legs out from Trump till he got to this point. Then the other one was the way the calendar is set up. And unlike the delegates who have kind of a stop, uh, Democrats, excuse me, who have the super delegates as kind of a stopgap or something like this, <clears throat> it was a perfect storm for Republicans. You, you buy that or was there one thing above all else if they had to do it all over again that had done it differently than instead of finding themselves where they are tonight? Well, I think. At the outset, he was underestimated, and I think that we still underestimate him. To this day, we underestimate Donald Trump. And the reason I say that is because people are saying, well, he's not, you know, he's, he's an outsider, he's not a politician. I argue with that. He isn't a, he is a politician. He's a, one of the finest politicians. Whether you like him or dislike him, he has tapped into something, and I think it's instinct, I think it's, it's something in an instinct of his, to be able to know how people feel and to be able to address them the way wait they want to be addressed. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, time out, time out. You think it was all brilliant politicking? Yes. To, to yes. What he did no to doubt. Latinos, what mm -hmm. he said about women? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can go down no, basically every ethnicity. Wanna, That's brilliant wait, politicking? Wait, 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 first of all, first of all, women. I, I mean, what he said, if you if you want to talk about you know right to life stuff and things like that, but otherwise, no, I'm talking about what he said on the Howard Stern interview and what he said throughout oh, the campaign. But you know what, you're you let's have not to make them all of a the sudden high information no, voters no, no. here. The electorate are regular people, and they may have said things like that themselves. Doesn't make a person a bad person. Donald Trump knows how to talk to people. Clearly, the polls it's been clearly don't the polls no, it, clearly don't like what the women have to say about Donald Trump. Look, that's right now. I guarantee you those polls with a women favorability vote will move in his favor by the time we hit November. I promise I'm you check. that. I want you to It's raining out, and I'll let everyone know tomorrow if he wore a red hat with Make America Great when he went out in the rain here. Uh, Dom, just again step back for a second. The idea that he is the nominee. It's not shocking. Of Richard. course it's, it's shocking. Not. Don't it's give me not. That. And Richard. to call him out on it. Richard, no Richard, way. it's not shocking. When he came down the escalator, you really yes, thought this was it was nominee? calculated. Everything he did has been count. I I keep trying to explain every night. Everything Brad just said is completely accurate. He has this the uncanny first time ability. Never said that. To me, so thank <laughs> you. Yo, maybe I'll take it back now. <laughs> he has this ability. No, he's right. Seriously to connect in ways. See, we got to look at how do you go from one of 17 to being the man? Think about it. Well, you were in a clown car for the first though. Let's not, let's no, not kid no, each other. No, no, no. <laughs> right. There are 17 <laughs> talented politicians right, up there. Right. Maybe 13. But there were a whole <laughs> bunch going, of going, yeah. Maybe 10, even <laughs> if it was six. That's a big field. I mean, this guy, I, Dominic, I don't want to steal your thunder, but I want to just say it as enthusiastic as I can, is that you got to give the guy a ton of credit. Mm -hmm. you got to believe that he's mm -hmm. more than just Bluster okay. and a okay. phenomenon. Okay, but Bob, He's the real deal. But Bob, here's my only thing. Whenever Sorry. I hear it's that, okay. all right, <laughs> I, I laugh because oh. the, the premise that he is, that this is all part of a grand plan, that he thinks out what he's going to say beforehand. Like it was great political strategy that he's repeating the inquire that Ted Cruz's father killed JFK. That, that's very presidential, by the way. But I'm not trying to be hold my nose up. Every speech sounds the same. He's all over the place. There's no rhyme and reason to wherever he's going. He's, he's mitigated and alienated so many groups. Now, all of a sudden, we're going to say the Clintons are stupid. They were begging for it to be Trump. Do oh, you boy. think everybody's They're ever... going to be sorry. Oh, yeah, you we think so. What you oh, wish for. Oh, that's a... That's they, a they are going to be sorry. Now, do you say that with pride, or do you say that like, uh-oh? No, 
um, I, I think he's going to get this act together. A and I do not think this was a grand strategy. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I think he went from victory to victory and learned and made mistakes and, and continues to make them. But he's going to get this act together. He now has a team uh, of real politicians. Who they say, if you believe it, he's resistant um, at the attempts to try and force him to act presidential because he says it worked for me to this point. That's fine in a primary, but in a general, right? Well, it depends on uh, whether he has the same gut instincts that he seemed to have shown in the Republican primary. Look, he tapped into the anger of the Republican voters. Nobody else in the field was able to do that. He identified three or four key issues that he knew would resonate with the base or with the voters that he was appealing to, and it did. And then the, also the process of which 17 went down to one played out beautifully for him, and I think he, he intended for that to happen to a certain degree. Rubio, Jeb Bush, the Scott, Scott Walker, the more formidable challengers were out of the race early so that by the time the Republican field got its act together and really focused on stopping Trump, too late. Kasich and Cruz weren't palatable. Yep. You might want to think of something else. In those states where there were open primaries, the number of Democrats that came over was staggering. These are the ones he won 60%. Uh, in Queens, the number of Democrats that wanted to vote in the Republican primary was unbelievable. And, and they, everyone should know this. They can't do mm -hmm. it. Though you don't know if that was to vote for him or against him. Even so if they, they voted vote for, for him. No, but even if they it, voted this, for him, were they yeah. trying to basically, you know, pick well, their in, opponent in, in, in the general? places like early yeah. on Massachusetts. Oh, no, I was no, 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 right. right. We'll get into it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that he's in here, and instead of how he got here and, and how the heck are we in this place, the question is, and this is the big one. What happens next? Will the GOP rally around him? And who will he pick as his running mate? We'll get into all that and a lot more.